Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Jessica and I'm a final year PhD student at the University of Aberdeen and I study in the field of natural products chemistry. So today I wanted to make a video explaining the process behind how I managed to prepare and write my review paper that was recently published in Frontiers in Marine Science. This was the first paper that I was the first author of, so it was a big big learning curve and I basically just wanted share everything that I learned during the planning, writing and reviewing process of getting the paper published so you guys can have hopefully an easier time when you come to publish your own papers. The reason that I wanted to write this review paper was I wanted to have a paper out there explaining why my research is important and the impact that my research could have on the marine environment and in specific industries. I decided to go for a mini review paper as I wanted to keep it quite short and to the point and because I am trying to persuade people that my project is important. I didn't want them to be faced with this huge paper of 20-30 pages reviewing everything. I just wanted to stick to the main points and the main reasons as to why my work is important. The first step in preparing this paper was to plan exactly what I wanted to write in the paper and to also find the, the relevant papers to be used in the study. Because I'm in my final year and I'm already quite familiar with my topic, I already had a database of papers that I have been using for my studies. But if you are a first year PhD student, for example, and this is your first time writing a review and this is your first time trying to find papers, there's a few different resources that you can use. So the first resource for finding papers is Google Scholar. So this is a built-in feature when you go to google.com and from here you can search for different papers using different keywords. I don't tend to use Google Scholar so much because I feel like it doesn't give you such great search functions compared to other tools. So the main tool that I like to use for finding papers is called Web of Science. Using Web of Science you can easily filter by author, by discipline, by research category, by journal and it's a very very good tool for finding those papers which are specific to the topic that you want to write about. When you're using these types of searching tools it's good to kind of switch up the keywords a little bit so let's say for example in my topic I'm working on anti-fouling. Let's say I'm trying to find anti-fouling compounds from marine invertebrates so I could search for anti-fouling marine invertebrates as my keywords or I could search for anti-fouling natural products and maybe some of the hits that come up will be natural product anti-fouling compounds from marine invertebrates. When you're searching for papers it's really important to know exactly what you're searching for and to create the necessary keywords in order to find the papers related to that topic. I'm kind of going back a step here but before I even started searching for the papers that I needed for the study I actually made a plan of the different sections, the different chapters let's say, of the paper that I wanted to write. So so it's very important when you're writing anything to have a plan uh, just to give you a bit of guidance on what's actually going to be going into your paper and what information you need to find in order to write those sections. This is quite different from writing a results-based paper because a results-based paper has usually the traditional layout of introduction, methods and materials, results and discussion and your conclusion. But when you're writing a review paper you are a lot more free. Usually you will have an introduction but then your section headings from then on are not material methods and results in discussion. They're up to you because it depends which uh, categories, which topics you are reviewing in your paper. So I just have my paper in front of me here for reference, but the topic headings that I decided to go with were the introduction, which is required for a review paper, and then I had effects of biofouling on marine industries, and within that topic I had subheadings of the different marine industries that I wanted to discuss. And then the next section was currently used anti-fouling agents and their environmental effects, because this was one of the main points that I wanted to put across in the review paper, that the current currently used anti-fouling agents have an effect on our marine environments. Again, within this uh, section I have subsections highlighting the different anti-fouling compounds which are being used and their effects on the marine environments. So I kind of have lots of mini reviews in this one review because the whole review isn't just on one topic, it's on one general topic but then it's broken down into different sections. So that's why it's important to plan because you need to know exactly your focus and how you're going to lay it out to get your point across in the best way possible. The next section was anti-fouling active marine natural products. So this section was trying to highlight why anti-fouling active compounds from marine invertebrates or from other natural sources 
areas could be used as new anti-fouling compounds. So as you can see, there's a story being told here. I'm introducing why anti-fouling is a problem with the marine industries, the currently used anti-fouling compounds and how they negatively affect the marine environment. And then I'm introducing anti-fouling active compounds from marine natural sources, from marine organisms, and how they could be used as new anti-fouling active compounds. So I've structured my argument in a way that it tells a story which is really important when you're writing a sort of um, opinion paper or a mini review paper like this. Then finally, I have the concluding remarks. So this is important for summarizing everything that you mentioned in the paper, but it's also important for putting your little own remarks into the paper. This is your chance to make opinions, which people could then quote later on in their own papers. It's for you to reflect on how you think the topic should progress research-wise, and it's just a good place for you to have your opinion and have your say on the topic. Okay, so as for actually writing the sections, I basically approached it by taking one section at a time, doing the relevant research for that section, writing notes on all of the papers that I read, and making notes of the key points that I would like to write in each of the sections. And I did all of that before I even started writing anything. This was just my personal approach and it worked really well for me, but I found that by doing all of the research, getting all my notes in one place before I even started writing, it meant that all of my notes were there, I just had to make it into comprehensible sentences. So here is my folder where I show how I organized everything in the planning and the organization and the writing stages of the paper. And as you can see here, I have a folder which is just dedicated to saving the papers related to the different sections. So I actually have different folders for each of the different topics and within each folder is all of the papers that I needed. This just meant that all of my papers were saved in folders so I could easily access them at any time and everything was just all in the one place. I didn't have to look through my downloads folder, I didn't need to look through any other folders to find the papers required for this specific paper. Here's an example of one of the documents I made which has all of the notes that I took from the different papers. So I had all of the notes ready just to write everything up. You should also notice that every time I write down notes, I also write down which paper I took the notes from. And this is really important because when you're writing your paper, you need to reference where you got the information from. And during the note writing process, if you don't write where the specific parts of information came from, you're going to have a terrible time later on trying to find that information again from all of those papers that you've saved. So I like to, when I take these notes, I write at the end the author, the year, and I can easily then find the paper so I can reference it within my own paper. So as you can see here, I just had one document for the whole section. And then within that section, I also wrote notes for the subsections. And because all the notes were there, it was really easy to just put all of the information together, make it sound nice, make it flow nicely and tell the story within the review paper. So for this specific paper, because it was a mini review and I think I ended up having about 50 references, I didn't actually use a reference management software. So I have used one before called Mendeley and I know that you can also use EndNote, I think it is. But to put all of my references together, I actually use a website called Cite This For Me. So with Cite This For Me, you can go on and you can choose your referencing style and it will actually create a bibliography for you with all of the references that you upload. For my thesis and if I'm writing a larger paper in the future, I will def definitely use a reference management system because it just helps you to keep track of all your references a lot better. And if you have to put references in order in the text, it will make your bibliography depending on that. So it can really help to take away the manual reference system by you doing it all yourself in the Word document and it will sort everything for you automatically using the reference management system. As you can see here in my sections written folder, this is where I kept the documents where I actually wrote each section in an individual document and at the end I ended up like pulling them all together. So you can see here the documents that I have where I started to write the final version of each of the sections. Using those notes notes that I'd created in the other documents. Also at the end of each of the section that I wrote, I would have its own individual reference list. So all of the references for that section were put at the end and then later on, once everything was compiled together, I could then sort the references accordingly. I just want to point out here the main kind of uh, homepage, let's say, of the folder where I kept everything for writing this review article. You'll see that there's lots of different files. So here is where I kept, so chem draw files where I made the structures that I needed for the figures for the paper. It's where I kept the template for submitting the paper. 
to the journal. So I think I will do a part two where I discuss the submission process and the revision process when you are submitting a paper. If you think that would be useful, please comment down below. It'd be really great to know if you would be interested in hearing about the submission and the revision process. But here is where I just kind of put the kind of miscellaneous things. Also different edits of the paper as well. So you'll notice that there is a lot of different edits here because I sent it back and forth to my supervisor. He gave me corrections and feedback and I edited it a few times and I saved every single copy because you might change your mind and want to go back to an earlier version. So I just made sure to keep everything. Often with review papers, you will be writing them with other people and it will be more of a collaborative approach. But actually for this paper, I was the first author and in fact, the only author because my supervisor said that I'm the expert in this topic and he was quite happy for me to write it all on my own and just to give me little bits of feedback. So that was really great. But if you're working with other people, then it might take a little bit more organisation and coordination. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope that was a helpful little insight on how I stayed organised and how I planned and actually wrote my paper. Uh, I'm so pleased to have published my first paper and know it has taken me until my final year to actually get it published, but I am really, really pleased. If any of you guys have published your own papers, please do leave the link in the comments box below as I would love to read what you guys have written and what you guys have been up to with your own research. Thank you so much for watching and like I say, if you'd be interested in knowing about the submission and the review process or when I submitted this paper, please do let me know and I'll be happy to make a video about it. I'll also be happy to go through some of the timelines of how long it took me to write, when it was started, when it was submitted, how long did it take to get published. I'm happy to discuss all of that if anyone is interested. Thank you so much again and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!